All right, everybody, welcome back. We're diving into Rich Dad, Poor Dad today, huh? A book that's basically reached legendary status when it comes to personal finance. I mean, you ready for this? Over 41 million copies sold. It's incredible. The impact this book has had is just amazing. What really gets me fired up about this deep dive, though, is that Robert Kiyosaki doesn't just hand you a bunch of financial tips, you know? He digs way deeper gets you thinking about money in a whole new light. You're right. It's like he's trying to break you free from all those old ideas about money and make you question everything. Exactly. And he does it, you know, by sharing his experiences growing up. He had his own father, who he calls his poor dad, worked super hard, had all the education, but still struggled with money his whole life. The classic story of someone trapped in that rat race. They put in the hours, earn a decent living, but never quite seem to get ahead financially, you know. It's like they're on a treadmill, yeah. going nowhere faster. Right? Yeah. Then you've got the rich dad, his best friend's father. Mm -hmm. This guy dropped out of high school, right? But he understood how money worked, saw potential where other people just saw roadblocks. And guess what? He ends up as one of the, the wealthiest people in Hawaii. Makes you wonder. That's the whole point Kiyosaki's trying to make, right? He's using that contrast, that comparison, mm -hmm. to highlight how crucial your mindset is when it comes to money. It's not about the size of your paycheck. It's about your whole perspective. It's a total game changer, right? I mean, yeah. you could be pulling in a massive salary, but if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're not building wealth. Kiyosaki's message is loud and clear on this one. You've got to flip the script. Instead of working for money, make that money work for you. And he actually lays out a plan for how to do just that which is. Oh, yeah. And that's what we're here to unpack. So one of the very first things Kiyosaki wants you to grasp is this distinction between assets and liabilities. You mean how he defines an asset as something that puts money in your pocket and a liability as something that takes it out? It sounds simple on the surface, but you'd be surprised how many people get tripped up by this. Oh, I know. It's so true. Take houses, for example. Most people automatically think of their house as their most valuable asset. But Kiyosaki, he challenges that assumption. He's like, hold on a minute. Is your house truly an asset? Sure, it might increase in value over the years, but it also comes with this whole avalanche of expenses, your mortgage payments, those pesky property taxes, insurance, maintenance, not to mention those surprise plumbing emergencies that always seem to pop up at the worst possible time. Suddenly, all those costs add up, right? That dream home starts looking a little different. It all comes down to seeing the complete picture, you know? While owning a home can definitely be part of a solid financial strategy, Kiyosaki really wants you to zero in on building up a portfolio of assets that actually generate income. So we're talking stocks, rental properties, maybe even creating something like online courses or writing a book. That all falls under intellectual property, yeah. right? Exactly. Those are the types of assets with the potential to generate what's called passive income or increase in value over time, all while you're catching some Z's. Now, that's the dream, isn't it? Having your money work harder than you do. That's the core message here, no doubt about it. It's about transforming your entire relationship with money, understanding that money can be a tool, a powerful one, to build long-term wealth and create real freedom in your life. And, you know, this is where Kiyosaki really drops a truth bomb on us. He's like, hey, most of us, we never actually learn how to play this money game. Oh, tell me about it. It's like we're thrown into this financial jungle with absolutely zero training. I mean, we spend years, years of our lives learning algebra, history, the whole nine yards. But when it comes to managing our own money, investing it wisely, understanding how taxes work. We're basically just winging it, hoping for the best. Yeah. And that's scary because the wealthy, they've been learning these rules since they were kids. It's like a whole different ball game. They're playing chess and we're stuck playing checkers. Exactly. It's like Kiyosaki talks about this strategy, right? It's called the 1031 exchange. And it's really popular with people who invest in real estate. But... To the average person, it sounds insanely complicated. It might seem intimidating at first, yeah, but it's an incredibly smart strategy when you break it down. Basically, it lets you avoid paying those capital gains taxes when you sell a property, as long as you take those profits and reinvest them in another similar property. So just to be clear, you're saying you could sell one of your rental properties, buy a new one, and legally avoid paying taxes on the profit you made from that first sale. You got it. That's the beauty of it. It's a really powerful way to build wealth over time without having those taxes chip away at your profits. And the best part, 
completely legal. It's just that most people, they've never even heard of it. See, that's exactly what Kiyosaki means when he talks about the importance of financial literacy. It's not just about balancing your checkbook or sticking to a budget. It's about understanding these more advanced strategies, these power moves that can make your money work harder and smarter for you. He's all about leveling the playing field, empowering people with that knowledge. And his argument is, look, traditional education, it just doesn't cut it. We're basically left to figure the stuff out on our own, often after we've already made some pretty costly mistakes. It's like learning the hard way, which is never fun when it comes to your money. That's why Kiyosaki is such a huge advocate for investing in your financial education. Couldn't agree more. Reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's a fantastic starting point, but he doesn't stop there. He encourages people to attend seminars, find mentors in the field, just constantly be on the lookout for new knowledge. It's all about becoming a lifelong learner, especially when it comes to money. Because let's face it, the financial world, it's constantly evolving. There are always new strategies to discover, new rules of the game. The more you know, the better prepared you'll be to make smart choices with your money. Okay, so let's recap for a second. We've talked about adjusting our mindset, right? We're starting to see the world through this lens of assets versus liabilities, and we're fully committed to boosting our financial IQ. What's next on the Rich Dad agenda to unlock financial freedom? Well, one thing Kiyosaki really emphasizes is diversifying your income streams. In fact, he attributes a lot of his own success to building multiple businesses rather than relying on just a single job. He talks about how the majority of people are trapped in this rat race, mm. right? They're trading their precious time for money at a job they might not even like that much. They're stuck on that treadmill, just going through the motions. But imagine if you could break free from that cycle. It's about designing a life where your income isn't solely dependent on you clocking in and out every day. So we're talking about building businesses on the side, maybe generating some rental income, getting those dividends from smart investments, things that keep the money flowing even when you're not actively working. Exactly. And Kiyosaki, he's a big champion for entrepreneurship, but he's also very clear that it doesn't mean you have to quit your job tomorrow and risk it all on a risky venture. It's more about exploring different avenues, building up valuable skills, and gradually building something amazing on the side. It's like planting seeds for your future. He even cautions against putting all your eggs in one basket, career-wise, you know? Yeah. He's a firm believer in developing a wide range of skills because it makes you more adaptable, opens up more doors. It's that classic saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If one source of income dries up, you've got others to fall back on. Exactly. And the skills he talks about, they're valuable no matter what you do for a living. Things like mastering sales, becoming a communication pro, financial management, huh. leadership. These are the skills that translate across any field and give you the power to create your own opportunities. So even if you're not quite ready to become an entrepreneur just yet, having these skills in your back pocket can help you really excel at your current job, maybe negotiate a well-deserved raise, or just make smarter decisions with your money overall. It's about taking the driver's seat of your financial journey rather than <laughs> feeling like you're stuck in the passenger seat, you know? Absolutely, taking control of your financial destiny. But even with all the right tools and the right mindset, Kiyosaki is very real about the fact that building wealth, it's not always a walk in the park. There are mental and emotional hurdles that can trip up even the most well thought out plans. Yeah, he doesn't sugarcoat it at all. In fact, he goes on to outline these five main reasons why so many people struggle to achieve real financial freedom. And you know what? They're surprisingly relatable. We've all been there. Guys. Yeah, let's unpack those roadblocks. What are these obstacles that seem to keep so many people stuck in that cycle of financial struggle? Well, you know, Kiyosaki, he calls them the five major reasons why people fail financially. And the first one he digs into is fear, which, you know, might seem kind of obvious on the surface, but he goes a bit deeper with it. It's not just about being afraid of losing money. It's that fear of failing, fear of what we don't know, the kind of fear that can completely paralyze us, you know, keep us from taking risks, even when those risks are calculated. Oh, I know that feeling, that little voice in your head. It's like, but what if I mess this up? What if I lose everything? That can be crippling. It's like that fear takes over and it keeps us from even trying. But here's the thing Kiyosaki points out. It's not that successful people don't feel fear. They've just learned how to manage that fear, how to take action, even when they're afraid. So it's not about being fearless. It's about not letting fear call the shots. Right. So what's the next roadblock on the list? The next one he talks about is cynicism. And honestly, cynicism can be just as sneaky and destructive as fear. 
It's that voice that pops up and says, oh, this is too good to be true, or the system's rigged, I never had a chance. Kiyosaki, he calls cynicism a loser's game because it stops you from even seeing opportunities. You can't believe in yourself or your potential. You talk yourself out of it before you even start. Exactly. And then there's laziness. Kiyosaki doesn't just mean being physically lazy, though. He's talking about a refusal to learn, to grow. It's about being mentally lazy, you yeah. know? Like, you're just not willing to step outside of your comfort zone, even if it means bettering yourself. It's way easier to just stick with what you know, even if it's not really getting you anywhere. Right? It's comfortable. Yeah. But Kiyosaki, he challenges us to get uncomfortable. And then, of course, there are those bad habits. They're often the tough to break, wouldn't you say? I mean, yeah. overspending, leaning on those credit cards a little too much, and not making saving a priority. They seem like small things, but those everyday choices, they can snowball into some major roadblocks down the line. It's like death by a thousand tiny financial cuts. That's a good way to put it. You hardly notice it's happening until dot bam, you're there. And lastly, Kiyosaki brings up arrogance. And he actually sees this one, arrogance, as the most dangerous roadblock of all. Now, that's interesting. Why do you think that is? Well, because arrogance, it's the biggest obstacle to learning. When you think you've got it all figured out, you stop being open to new ideas, new perspectives, new ways of doing things. And in the world of finance, which is constantly shifting and changing, that kind of closed-mindedness, that's a recipe for disaster. It's like that saying, right? The more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. <laughs> so how do we actually fight back against these roadblocks? Kiyosaki gives us some tools, right? Some ways to actually combat these things. He does. And, you know, one of the simplest but most powerful habits he talks about is paying yourself first. Now, that's a phrase I've heard a lot, but I think it's easily misinterpreted. It doesn't mean just going out and spending a bunch of money on yourself every time you get paid, right? No, definitely not. It's about shifting your priorities. It means deciding that your financial well-being comes first. Before you even think about paying your bills, before you hit the grocery store, even before that tempting morning latte, you set aside a portion of your income specifically for your future self. So like automating your savings, yeah. making it a non-negotiable part of your budget. You treat it like any other essential expense. Exactly. And you know what? Even if it's just a small amount, like even $20 a week, the key is consistency. Over time, those small amounts, they add up. And then that money, that's what you use to build up that asset column we were talking about. Investing in your education, maybe even starting that side hustle you've been dreaming about. Maybe it goes toward retirement. It's about Creating a system where you're not just living paycheck to paycheck, constantly playing catch up. Exactly. Taking control. And, you know, that's what I find so inspiring about Kiyosaki's message and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's not just about becoming a millionaire. It's about taking control of your finances, which honestly, it's like taking control of your life, your future, your freedom. It's about having options, the ability to chase your dreams without that constant weight of financial worry holding you back. One of my favorite quotes from the book is when Kiyosaki says, the single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. And that's something that's really stuck with me. Because at the end of the day, our financial reality, it's often a direct reflection of our mindset, our beliefs. So true. And look, while Rich Dad, Poor Dad has definitely received its fair share of praise and many consider it life-changing, there are also those who criticize it. Some argue that Kiyosaki's advice is overly simplistic or that he maybe glorifies taking financial risks a bit too much. Right. And I think it's crucial for everyone to remember that this book, like any financial advice, it should be a starting point, not the final word. It's not a magic formula to get rich quick. And what works for one person might not work for everyone. Absolutely. Everyone's financial journey is unique. But regardless of whether you agree with everything Kiyosaki says, there's no denying he makes you think about money differently. And that in itself is incredibly valuable. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Rich Dad, Poor Dad, what's the biggest takeaway for you? Was it the importance of financial literacy, that power we have to build assets? Mm. Or maybe it was Kiyosaki's challenge to break free from conventional thinking about money. You know, I think the core message here is that financial freedom, it's not some far off dream. It's achievable, but it does require us to shift our mindset, to be open to learning and most importantly, to take action. And as we've been discussing that journey, that path to financial freedom, it's going to look different for everyone. We hope this deep dive has given you some valuable insights, some new tools for your toolkit, and maybe even sparked a little fire in you to take charge of your financial future. Build the life you deserve. Until next time. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep diving deep.